Good afternoon and welcome to Banner TV, your bi-weekly news update on everything UNCA. I'm Lily Boudreau and these are your headlines. As of August 27th, there are zero new cases of COVID-19 on campus between UNC Asheville faculty, staff, or students, bringing the total number of cases since July 1st to 10. UNC has put effort into emphasizing health protocols with the purchasing of personal protective equipment, such as hand sanitizer, masks, and plexiglass, and implementing social distancing across campus. In a recent interview with Blue Banner reporter Courtney Garcia, UNCA Chancellor Nancy J. Cable said a shift to online learning would require, quote, clustered outbreaks like Chapel Hill saw earlier last weekend, and if we would have a positive testing rate, a positivity rate on the number tested that would go higher than the health department would allow, that would trigger a pivot, end quote. However, due to mask wearing, social distancing, and hand hygiene, Cable says we've got it covered. Power outages affected parts of campus Sunday night after a traffic accident occurred on Broadway Street. According to the police report, a driver swerved to avoid an animal on the road, crashed into a power pole, and fell 40 feet into a ditch. Buildings across campus, including the Woods Apartments, lost power for six hours until Duke Energy eventually restored them. The driver declined emergency medical services at the scene. In not so shocking news, the French Broad is dirty and you should not be swimming in it. According to recent bacterial sampling, the French Broad River basins showed rising levels of E. coli, a potentially pathogenic bacteria. 30 tests were conducted by the conservation organization Mountain True. 70% of those tests failed to meet the United States Environmental Protection Agency's E. coli level limit for recreational waters. Every single test done in the Asheville city limit failed. The nonprofit cited issues in racial equality as a historically black neighborhood faces the worst of the river. In an August 7th news release, Mountain True called on the Asheville City Council to address the issue, saying, quote, the Asheville City Council has a moral and legal responsibility under the Clean Water Act to protect our rivers and water quality for all city residents. City of Hendersonville staff has already committed to establishing a stormwater task force. Asheville should too, end quote. On August 12th, the NCAA Big South Conference announced all competitive sports would be postponed through the fall 2020 season until further notice. Athletes continue to participate in daily training and practice with COVID procedures in place. UNCA women's soccer captain Grace Kietkowski told the banner, quote, our coaches have broken us up into three separate training pods based on housing and require that we wear masks during low intensity training, lifting, indoor activities, and meetings on and off the field. The coaches are extremely careful to follow CDC guidelines, end quote. Players remain cautiously optimistic for the spring semester, but no official announcements have been made so far. This week, we have a special spotlight interview with Sean Miller, head of communications for the medical team at the Black Lives Matter protest. Today, she gives an inside look at a story that made national headlines. I started walking down the street towards the protest and they continued, I heard from behind me, they continued to threaten, they continued to threaten with arrest and tear gas. I heard them beginning to, you know, slash all of the water bottles. We had well over $2,000 worth of medical supplies and water bottles and they proceeded to destroy all of them. And then after that, everything was destroyed and they started attacking the protesters after they knew that all of our medical supplies were um, useless. Now, let's take a look at Around the Clock in 60 Seconds with Max Klein. Hello everyone, my name is Max Klein and this is the Blue Banner's Around the Clock in 60 Seconds, where we find a relevant issue in the area and take a deep dive into its history and current impact all in under a minute. Whether you're in line at a coffee shop, waiting for your bagel to pop out of the toaster, or you have a minute to kill, now is the time to sit back, relax, and learn. Zebulon Baird Vance was born in Buncombe County on May 13, 1830 to a family owning 18 slaves. He grew up to become a captain in the Civil War and the North Carolina state governor. He was notable for his beliefs about defending small government systems and strong individual rights. He was also known to be a white supremacist, owning six slaves in his adulthood and there's even evidence that he could have been a grand dragon of the Ku Klux Klan. After he died, many things in North Carolina were made and or named in his honor for his time as governor, and the Zebulon Baird Vance Monument is one of them right in the middle of downtown Asheville. This year's protests against police brutality and systemic racism across the United States increased anger in Asheville around this monument, and the city has taken action as a result. The monument has been covered up in an effort to both protect it from vandalism and to also lessen the damages given off by its presence. 
The city has appointed a new Vance Monument Task Force deliberating between moving the monument out of Pack Square, renaming it, or getting rid of it altogether. Truly, only the future holds the answers as to what is to become of this monument. Full stories can be found on thebluebanner.net, or you can look for a print newspaper around campus. Stay updated by following us on Instagram at UNCA Blue Banner. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on post notifications for new videos. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Lily Boudreaux, and this is Banner TV.